YouTube in a second. Um, Hi, JD. I've got I've got a classmate here. Awesome. Yeah, he's great. JD Lawrence. Oh yeah, we JD. Hey, hey Anna. Hi. <laughs> awesome. It's so good to see you. <laughs> I'll mute myself again though. Don't want to cause trouble. <laughs> All the troublemakers are here. Okay. So now I'll share my screen. I'll tell everybody what's happening, um, where you are, what's going on, and we'll get ready for Anna. So, yep, it's the We Believe in Comics Friday Night Workshop. Thank you so much for being here. This is the Sequential Artists Workshop. Um, that's us. Oop. All right. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We're a school. We have online courses. You can go to learn.sawcomics.org. Sawcomics.org also works. We should probably amend that. Um, oh, next week. Next week, we have a comics workshop with Whit Taylor if she's feeling better. So stay tuned. If that changes, we'll let you know. Um, yeah. Coming soon in September, we have the year long certificate program that we want to tell you about. And if you're interested, we're having a live, let's see, I think it's the next screen. There we go. We're having a live Q and A um, August 16th at 1 PM Eastern. So there'll be a sign up link for that pretty soon. You'll be able to see, and um, you can just come and join us and, and learn lots about it and ask lots of questions. Um, share what you do tonight on social media. Friday Night Comics is the hashtag at Comics Workshop is us. I'll put Anna's information in the chat. And um, you can also go to members.sawcomics.org for lots, lots of uh, sharing and, and learning and stuff going on. And it's Sawgust. I should let Susan talk about Sawgust. Um, so to those of you who have donated to this or any of the other workshops, we really appreciate it. It helps, it helps keep these funded. Um, and you can support us through PayPal and Patreon and all of those, all of those things. Uh, please, no inappropriate speech or imagery, no trolling or hate speech, keep it PG-13, and enjoy. Um, now, here's Anna, cartoonist and chaos bomb, love that. Um, and there's that green painting we are talking about. So I'm going to stop sharing, Let's see if I get this right. Ta -da. And I'm going to spotlight Anna, is that all right, Anna? It's yeah, spotlight. totally. Spotlight that one all right so anna you're back i'm so glad you're back thank you yes for thank you so much for having me yeah. uh it, it is my turn to share the screen oh uh, that's the one i want okay is this working can you see my screen got it yep okay so hi everybody welcome to this friday night workshop comics about pets um, I am Anna Selheim. I'm a cartoonist based in Baltimore, Maryland. I received my MFA for comics from the Center for Cartoon Studies in 2016. I am primarily a short form cartoonist. You can read a lot of my work for free at AnnaSelheim.com. You can also support me on Patreon, Instagram, Tumblr, and TikTok at Anna Selheim. And I am, I have a podcast with my friend, Teresa at Make Art Talk S, because we don't do swears here. Uh, and that is on Instagram. <laughs> You're so I think that counts as PG-13. Okay, so we are doing comics about pets. These are my two pets. Uh, Rudy is the Bichon that is melting on the armchair. Apricot is uh, the half Chihuahua, half uh, Jack Russell Terrier that is a little loaf on the couch. Um, they are my demon dogs, hellhounds, but loves of my life. Um, this is a better picture of Rudy. Uh, he is the epitome of pretty boy privilege. He knows he can get away with murder because of the way he looks. Um, he is actually very sweet, but he is also incredibly mischievous and likes to pretend he's huge and go after other dogs. Uh, but this is him posing and being beautiful. Also, the brown does not come out of his mustache. The groomers can't even get it out. Doesn't matter. 
it, he always comes with a varying level of brown, doesn't matter what we feed him. But this is more in tune with his personality. Um, he tends to like, his favorite thing is to melt into crevices. So, and then this is Apricot. Uh, Rudy starts out with all the attention because he's so cute, but Apricot tends to become everybody's favorite because she looks like a little rat. So she has to hustle. And so she's charming. Um, but she is, she's great. This is them getting pet and she's always super happy, but really her defining characteristic is that she just has an insatiable need to be pet at all times. Um, so Tom invited me to do this workshop because I gave him a lot of my work and one of the zines I gave him was called Three Terrible Dogs. Uh, and it's a bunch of gag comics about my three terrible dogs at the time. Uh, Frida has since passed away, but she lived a long and wonderful life. So, you know, I'm chill with it. Like, obviously I miss her, but Rudy and Apricot are enough of a bundle. Um, so it has a lot of gag strips of my three terrible dogs. Uh, it started out with this comic. Uh, Apricot loves to fall asleep on my face, fall asleep on my chest. Uh, She's just an attention hog. Uh, she insists on kissing you in the mouth. It's awful. Uh, uh, we Since she has come to live with me, she no longer has the dog beds. Uh, but her dog bed, she had a tour de fair with a dog bed for many years at my mother's place. And then Rudy um, has some more long form strips, but he also had uh, comics about the awful behavior as well. But these two dogs are also the best dogs because all dogs are the best dogs. So this workshop is gonna be divided into three parts and I'm gonna ask Tom to help me with timing. Um, the first exercise we're gonna do is based on uh, not drawing your, your, your pet literally, but essentially creating a character design that perfectly embodies the personality of your pet. So uh, Pop Shaw and Pushpaw is by Jim Woodring. Um, they're my favorite. They're kind of the only thing I care about in his work, but they are, I guess like the protagonist pets. I don't know. It's like a wood ch uh, chuck thing, but I really like them. And the thing I, I like best about them is that their shape language uh, fits together and also like tells you things about the relationship. So the fact that they fall asleep together, like I think is very is a very clever idea. Um, another thing that I think for a unconventional cat uh, pet design would be, I don't know if you are on social media, you've probably seen the Oh No comics, but uh, Oh No is by, Oh my goodness, I forgot his name, but, um, or their name, I should say. But the end of every gag strip is the pink blob saying, oh no, um, and their cat design is very clever. So again, just the unconventional character design you can think of. Um, this is obviously a comical version of, um, uh, you know, losing your pet to grief. If you wanna go a more serious approach, uh, Lucy Nisley did a beautiful comic about losing her cat and uh, everyone saying goodbye to her cat before it was put down and just so one of the comics we're going to be doing two comics tonight one is going to be about what you have either taught or failed to teach your pet and then the other thing is a comic about what your pet has taught you um and I think that, you know, the gratitude in this strip of getting to know this animal kind of teaches, I don't know. I, I think animals or pets have a lot to teach us. And I think this is like a really good strip you should look up about losing a pet. Um, the final uh, comics, oh, no, actually they're not the final, but there is a comic that I was obsessed with in middle school and high school called Jim Sturtle. Uh, it's by one of the preeminent voices in The Onion, Scott Dickerson, and it's a comic that is anti-humor, uh, quote unquote, but his goal was to make it 
each strip as boring as possible. Um, so it's about a incredibly dull man named Jim and his uh, his observations on life. And they had a cat named Mr. Peterson who turned out to be a girl. Um, but if you look at the character design of Mr. Peterson, you know, you don't, you can just make a squiggle and it still has a lot of personality. Um, and I also, this is my favorite Mr. Peterson strip, which is he looks out the window and then at the end, Mr. Peterson blocks his view. And so that's all he sees is a black scribble. Um, and then finally, I wanted to include everyone. So if you don't have a pet, you can draw about an animal that is important to you. So. This is Abby Howard, who actually does have a cat named Spoons and a snake named Wednesday. So if you do a comic about a pet that isn't a cat or a dog, that's bonus points. But, um, you know, I wanted to show one where she's only visiting her friend in order to visit her friend's cat. <laughs> um, because you are you can totally participate in this workshop, even if you don't have a pet on your own. It's just a pet that is important to you. And I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, wait, maybe, oh, stop share. Yada, 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 gotcha. Okay. So Tom, I don't know what the timing would be in terms of like, I think the character design should obviously be less time than the comic about the, the the two comics we're going to be doing. Do you have any idea ballpark? So one design and then two comics. Yeah. So the one is a character design of the essence of your pet's personality, uh, and then the other is um, the two comics we're doing. Maybe. What about what? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because Michael said, "What is this a three hour workshop?" <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. How about, how about five minutes for the design and ten minutes for each comic? And that works. That'll be 25 minutes and it'll put us right at, okay. I can time I, that. You can time that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna show you all, I'm gonna share my screen. You can all get started obviously, but I need to explain um, that is the wrong one, of course. Okay, stop that share. Actually, I'll do it. I will do it later. Uh, let's just get in. Got it. Got it. Okay. Don't leave. How do I start? I love that thing you said about shape language. What a great phrase. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't think like, okay, use Wi-Fi and then do that. Oh yeah, there's yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. Okay. Oh wow, there, there is, is a crazy. Is yeah, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, no, it's because my, um, my, uh, my computer was also recording. How do I, I'm trying to do my camera and flip it. Is it like that? It sure is. Okay. So meanwhile, we could be drawing, would you say the essence of our character, of our pet? but not yeah. what it really looks like, but what a kind of cartoony, spiritually, essence. Yeah, something that really encapsulates the personality of your pet. Okay. Um, and we've got, let's say four, four minutes for that or five or something. So does that make sense for everybody while we work out the tech on the visuals? Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. So that'll take us to 721. Okay. 21 after, depending upon. That's really fun. I'm really inspired by that cat with the face and its and its torso. Yeah, yeah. No, oh no, is such a like it's viral for a reason. It's a really good comic. Um, 
why did I, okay, yeah, yeah, you got it, All right. Rebecca says, I'm challenged by how to capture always in my face in a drawing. Yeah, I've got, I've got a cat who claws too much. I'm trying to really emphasize the claws. So maybe, maybe Rebecca, you have to always draw your face in it. Maybe the cat is always unattached. Yeah, I don't know. I'll let Anna do the talking. No, no, no. I think, I think you could incorporate like just, uh, yeah, I think you could incorporate a face, just like always being <laughs> present on a face. Well, that push paw was so inspiring in the cat and the scribble. Those were so such great, inspiring pet designs. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, push paw and I, I don't know if we could get away with like a, a, a Jim would, I don't even know if he still makes comics. I just found him in high school and I own yes. a couple big books of his. Um, but he just totally, he feels like, like of a completely different era, but I always thought the cats were really cute. Um, or I've always thought that pets were really cute and I don't fully understand the personality or ethics of the strip, but yeah. And unfortunately that book came with like a flyer where I could have ordered a push paw stuffed animal made in Japan, but I, um, didn't, uh, I didn't really read it. I just kept it. And it wasn't until I was looking for material for this class that I um that I decided to uh that I was like oh crud I really wish I could have gotten that stuffed animal <laughs> so are we waiting for you to come to log on Anna or are we staying I mean oh, wait can you not see me oh I realized you know what your old version is spotlighted but not your new version so gotcha that... my bad I didn't even oh, tell you that's yeah. my bad yeah here we go sorry about that everybody that okay. better Sorry, sorry. And now so, I get to your drawing. Oh yeah, and it's upside down, but that's okay. We can manage. It, no, I can. I can move it. I can definitely move that. There we go. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to show a video uh, at some point in this to fully encapsulate why apricot is just rolling all the time, um, but. She she hates um, she hates her harness, but unfortunately she runs away when you're trying to put it on. So I have to keep it on. And she she used to run away like multiple times a week. So now that she's old, she's chill and won't um, won't run away as much anymore. But uh, she does freedom rules each night when she gets to like get off and be naked. So that is just always how I see apricot is just constantly fidgeting and rolling and being in your face. <sighs> okay, so we've got about 30 more seconds for our design according to our, our strict schedule. Um, how's that feel? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, and then you'll give us the prompt for the first comic? Yes, that's correct. Freedom rolls. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were waiting for prompts for our first comic. So the Oops. first comic prompt is Here it comes. So the first comic prompt is gonna be something that you have taught or failed to teach your pet. Oh, okay. I'm all on track then. Oh good. <laughs> okay. So thank goodness. Okay. You can thank you. And I'm gonna start with an ebony pencil actually. Also, you can draw, you don't have to use a character design in your comic. You can draw the pet however you want. That was just kind of like a little separate exercise. But in terms of what I have failed to teach my pets. All right, I wrote it in the chat. Yeah, this is way more legible. Sorry about, um,
Whoa, I don't know what I am doing. Let's try that again. I have like, I just, I, I always get, I do so many TikToks and I still get uh, stage fright every time. Um. So I used to live in a suburb of Baltimore and I live in downtown Baltimore and I don't, so there's actually less trash in downtown Baltimore because I lived in a neighborhood where uh, kids would litter like in my complex, but the dogs like really learned about how to forage for scraps and specifically there would just be chicken bones all over uh, the complex uh, of the old apartment. So we had to learn how to uh, make them uh, not eat food and with varying results. doing something where I tried to teach my daughter not to hassle the cat, but it didn't work. I mean, that's hard. My boyfriend <laughs> gives me, my boyfriend gives me sass because I'm kissing the dogs all the time, but they like him better because he doesn't kiss them all the time because they don't really like being kissed. <laughs> and I'm like, they have one job and that is to snuggle with me uh, and be adorable. And he says, they don't know about that job. And I said, that is irrelevant. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing okay on time we, we still have five minutes left for those of you who are um wondering so maybe you're halfway through this first comic and is flying through it well yeah. i almost feel like you're you've recorded this prior and you're on speed you're showing no no i mean speed. i mean these <laughs> no, I am a, I'm a very fast artist. Uh, I used to be the slowest artist in my class in high school, but I got way faster. Um, okay. So this is for, we have five more minutes for the other, uh, for the, what we're teaching them. No, we got 10 total minutes for that. Okay. So this is this yeah, is me. This is comic one. Yeah. So this is comic one for me. And that is faster. 
There you go. So Apricot, they both have learned what it means. It's just Apricot doesn't want to listen. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. I forget which one is which of your dogs. So B Rudy is a Bichon, which is this dog. Wow. He's so we he gives like he gives side eye of epic proportions. So we always <laughs> like draw him being a little hipster, saying like your favorite favorite band sucks. And then Apricot is the Jack Russell, uh, the Jack Russell uh, Terrier slash uh, Chihuahua. So she's the Chaos Bomb, which well, she, she's like me as a dog. She's a Chaos Bomb like me. Okay. So. God. All right. So I guess I'm going to move on to the next one. Or we got a few minutes. Yeah, we still got two, two and a half okay. minutes. Let us, we, let us drink that in because that apricot yeah. thing is so insane. Like, you know, in a good way. <laughs> oh, jeez. We learned, um, Chris figured out today that she doesn't actually know that her name is Apricot anymore. She only mm -hmm. knows herself as Appy. So because I call her Appy or Happy Appy Appy or just like various iterations of Appy. So she doesn't actually respond to Apricot anymore. It's just Appy. Um, That's how language changes. Yeah. Oh, whoops. I always do this. I always, I very often accidentally. I was, um, wondering, I was wondering who was talking in that. Band. Yeah, no, I do that all the time where I mess up word balloons. I've actually was in a really popular anthology where I made the wrong person say the profound line and it <laughs> ruined the comic. And I'm so embarrassed that like, I don't even, even though I was one of the most popular anthologies I've ever been in, I don't ever plug it. Because it was printed and it was fun. Oh no. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Well, it, and also I was a little miffed at the editors for not like picking up that it made no sense that <laughs> the other person is saying it. But I, yeah, I do this all the time where I accidentally make the wrong person. Uh, or dog in this case. All right, according to my calculations, we have 45 seconds for that first comic. And maybe you can tell us the second prompt so that someone okay. can get started. If we so want. the second prompt is going to be something that your pet has taught you. Um, and I have to figure out how to do this because I, I had the luxury of thinking of these beforehand um, because I knew the prompts. I have an idea for this. Um, so we'll figure out how to do it. <laughs> okay, so. So the second prompt, something that your pet has taught you. This should be easier for those with geckos and lizards. I'm guessing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what Mishka says about that. Hey, what did you say about me? <laughs> <laughs> I said, maybe the second prompt will be easy for those with geckos. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my fish <laughs> when I was 10. Also, uh, please excuse my uh, bad spelling and grammar, because I also just forget words all the time.
You spelled PPL, right? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> too young. I was about to say too old. Too young. Next. I don't think that this is going to be more than one page. Oh, baristas, Lord. Barista. <laughs> Gonna write coffee guy. Some and of I will us not, some will of us not draw are wondering how's this gonna be about your pet? Uh you will see in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. <laughs> Uh, dude, dude. They were not wearing like one of these old timey doctor like lamps, but I'm gonna make them doing that. Doctor, mm -hmm. and then. Whoops. True. <laughs> okay, this just turned into like an epic novella, which I did not mean to do. We've still we still got three whole minutes. We'll see how everybody's doing.
I'll, ma I'll make them. Uh, I'll do the glamour puff in this particular panel. Not, I don't know if I'll do it for the rest of the comic, but. What do you call those glamour what? I, I'll make him a glamour puff, Rudy, oh. sleeping next to me. Because I didn't feel like drawing him accurately. Hmm. Uh, did I do sitting on the couch, I guess? I'm trying to think of like, because I did. I wore a mask indoor and outdoor for 10 days straight. And I'm trying to think of other things I did in my apartment besides sleep and not many things are coming to me. Um, the only time I took it off was to change the mask or eat uh, when the dogs. So yeah, we'll just have me on the couch, I guess. But you get the picture. Um, also the dogs were like super snuggly. They knew something was up. Wow, this is, that is the worst Rudy I've ever made, but I'll deal with it. I'm on the couch. I'm looking at my computer. Weird. It was hard though because like I ha I had to walk them and I live in downtown Baltimore and it was like I debated putting a giant like obviously I wore a mask but I debated putting a giant sign on my because a lot of people come up to you here and ask for money and I wanted to put a giant sign that was like please do not get close to me right now <laughs> like or I just like walk into I actually know a lot of people that live in my neighborhood it's like nice. I know a lot of my neighbors and I just thought about putting like a giant um, sign that said, I have COVID, stay away from me. But I think the mask and making sure I just like only stayed in the parking lot was enough. Uh, I will twitch. So for anyone not making an epic, or for if you are making an epic, we'll have a minute left. And then how are you doing, um, Anna? Well, I am done with This is the last panel. <laughs> I love that it's four pages long. I think it's the longest comic we've seen. Well, it's probably because I'm, I'm drawing huge, so it's legible. Um, see, this was like where I would definitely swear a bunch and like, but. <laughs> Uh, what is the visual here? Besides the fact that I'm thinking it. Um, sure, I guess. Boop. We'll do Appy. And Rudy. And Rudy. And so, yeah, I've been way stricter about wearing my mask again because I was just like being lazy because it was like 
like a pain in the butt and that was very selfish and nasty of me so i'm back getting my act together so <sighs> not the best thing i've ever done in terms of comics but you know <laughs> you want to you show us and then we'll take some uh and then we'll take some, some yeah volunteers to share sure so the COVID cases are rising and I'm getting lazy about wearing a mask indoors. Obviously, if they have a policy, I will follow it. But there are times I'm getting lazy about wearing my mask. Um, and I know cognitively this is inconsiderate of people with immune issues or like young children that are too young to be vaccinated. Anyway, I get COVID. Um, and then I freak out because I could give it to my dogs and I don't care about my health at all. But like, <laughs> if I get my dog sick, it is the end of the world. And so my doctor says when she had COVID, she just wore her mask around the dog. So I wore it nonstop 24 seven when I was, except when I was eating, in which case the dogs weren't anywhere around me. Um, and it was not a big deal. So I learned a lesson and it was a uh, stop being inconsiderate and entitled and get stricter about wearing your mask again. Did the dogs get COVID? They did. Oh, no. But Apricot threw up on day two. <laughs> and I I did call the vet crying because I I might have had a fever that day also, maybe. But um, she, uh, yeah, I called the vet crying. And they were like, she probably is really hard to give it to a dog. Uh why don't you just monitor her and see what happens? And then the next day she was totally normal. Um, but I had a false negative, even though I went and got my stuff tested at the lab. So like there were days where I knew I was really sick and was quarantining just because I was really sick and didn't want to give it to anybody, but I didn't know it was COVID. Um, mm. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Um, Anna, are, are you going to switch on the, other I computers. sure am. Give me okay. one moment. So when you do that, um, click your reactions. Oh, I like watching the phone go all crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll and I'll spot. click my reactions. <laughs> Under reaction, Under reaction. Oops, oops. will be, it'll be uh, uh, raise your hand. I see it. And then that will push you up, and then we'll take a look at what people want to share. And wait. So I am I am hitting reactions. Yeah. Okay. And then raise your hand. And we, okay. That did it. Good. And then great. And then we'll so we'll look at some comics, and you can tell us. You can uh, look at some comics. Yeah. So we'll go. Here's what I'm seeing in order: Catherine, Walter, Lori, and then uh, Allison. So we'll just start with Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, everyone. There we go. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Catherine. This is my husband, Mike. Uh, he's not a cartoonist but he also did one. So uh, this is one, mine is, what I failed to teach my, my pet, silence is a virtue. And then what I, uh, how, what I succeeded in teaching my pet was how to sit. And then, it's just sit. this is like early Linda Berry, I love it. <laughs> I get, yeah, you're right, totally. And then this is just the, um, Sorry, it's all in reverse for me when I'm looking. So what I, I learned from my pet is food robots are worth the money, <laughs> which, is, which is serious, like really are. Yeah, um, big one. And I'm gonna share real quick too, cause I'm here and I'm not an artist. So for those of you who maybe need more or, or, or want to feel better about your art, I'm here for you. So um, <laughs> this is, it's hopefully not too reflective. This is about a, a um, possum we had in our neighborhood in New Hampshire. So pure to the possum. Oh, wow. And these are little ticks. Because possums eat ticks. Possums eat ticks. And I was like, oh. all right, I'm going to get the possum to eat some ticks. So that's me pointing to the plate and saying, hey, possum, that's, that's some delicious dinner, right? And he's like, Who, who's this guy? So the possum then talks to the ticks. You know, I've got an idea. Possum runs away. The ticks run up my leg. And they're like, oh, dinner. <laughs> How did you how did you find ticks to feed the possum on a dinner? Oh, this is not in real life. I, I, I just I, I just as excited to be in a tick or, or a possum in our neighborhood because they eat ticks and uh ticks are a nuisance. They're awful. Yeah, that's great. Hey. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Walter next, then Lori, then Allison, then Kathy. I'll put that in the chat real fast too. 
when Walter's ready. Yeah. So the uh, oh wait, I got to turn on my camera, right? Yeah. There you go. There go. Um, so that's the character design. I always figured my cat would be a biker if he was a human. <laughs> Love that. So he's got that going on. Cat with and, attitude. Uh, what's that? He's a cat with attitude. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's old now, like me, but he was. So that's the um, what we taught him, um, which was he had a lot of vocabulary and he loved coming to the shower with us. Oh, wow. And this is what he taught me, how to take a bath. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. <laughs> we should all take after cats and just sleep all the time. Yes. I love it. Too much, too much screen time. Thank you. I loved your stuff. It was great to watch you do it too. That's so sweet. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, okay, we're going to Lori next. Okay. Um, uh, what I failed to teach my cat, Mika. Um, I failed to teach him how to clean himself. Um, how to stop tipping over his water bowl. How to stop leaving behind a mess mm -hmm. from his box. How to stop catching oh. my hummingbirds. That's such a bummer. <laughs> how to stop barfing on our mid-century modern rug. And how to stop taking over our cat's bed, I'm, our dog's bed. Oh. <laughs> and then what my cat taught me was how to enjoy the view, how to get his head scratched, how to get his favorite treats. So that is a unbelievably good drawing right there of your cat enjoying uh treats uh, that that's just a great drawing the way you've drawn your cat is fabulous oh thanks yeah. how to catch mice oh how to catch mice without giving up mm -hmm. and then how to relax in the garden enjoying the smells sights and sounds Seems like oh, cats are teaching people how to be in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. Uh, we'll go to Allison, then Kathy, then Chris. Oh, hey, so um, I lost Allison. What happened? Uh, hang on. Have you got oh. me? Uh, yeah, I think you lowered your hand and I lost you. Hang on. There oh, we go. Sorry, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so um, we adopted two cats in uh, January. And they were about six months old then. And one of them, Winston, he does this thing with his tail that is actually very fox-like. And I, I'm, it's only when he's about to do something really naughty. So that's what he's teaching <laughs> us, that yeah. he's about to do something really bad. But then I did um, this, this, this series of panels oh here. Uh, so what I've taught him is how to bite less hard. And... Um, so the little soft bites are a warning. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, he laughs at me if I tried to clicker train him. And Diego, uh, blessed memory, um, was blind, but he would still figure out how to jump up onto my lap and just hang out while I was, while I was at the computer mm -hmm. and never, never managed to teach Charlie not to walk across the stove. Uh, and then, um, this was a guinea pig that I had when, when in the 70s. And I used to sit with her on my stomach um, as a teenager and uh, uh, sing, sing to God, actually. Uh, and so she taught me how to do that oh. when there was still a God. And then um, Esme is, one, is the second other cat that we adopted in January and uh, never gave up the opportunity of emulating Granny Weatherwax. So her name's Esmeralda. So right. there you go. Thanks. These drawings are fabulous of all these pets. Have Thank you, you ever seen long hair guinea pigs? Yes, we had we had one. This one was an Abyssinian, so her hair went every yeah. which way. Yeah. But like, do everybody do yourselves a favor and see if you can find this BBC clip of the long hair guinea pig competition because it's like they have like a dog Westminster dog show, but it's for long hair guinea pigs. <laughs> And they have better hair than anyone present on this stream. It's fabulous. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lyle. I also will go to Kathy next. Let's see. There we go. 
I wasn't as speedy as other people this evening, so I didn't get all the comics, but I did try to make a little shape. So a, my dog is a treat hound. So I tried to write as a treat. And then this is the uh, trying to teach my dog something. So um, this is come, come George, come. And then having a hmm, because George was having none of that when I first got her. Mm -hmm. And we had to switch to with me, with me, and she will run. We had to get creative. That is such a fabulous drawing of her in motion. That's such good cartooning. Thanks. I'm trying. That was my plan. My plan was like to learn how to make, how to get her in motion. So yeah. I spent time that's, on that. That's fabulous. Yeah. Thanks. Is that your, is that your dog in the painting in the behind no. you? Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kathy. Thanks. Awesome. All right. We'll go to Chris. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right, so I have a cat that likes to jump up on all the different surfaces. So if there's a, he's not a lot on the kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. So when I find him on the counter, I always say no, and he jumps away. <clears throat> but then if I leave butter on the counter, he's always <laughs> going to find the butter. Mm -hmm. so I can't teach this cat anything. <laughs> That's a great licking panel. Yeah. <laughs> These animals are living their best life. Yeah. All right, we'll go to Michael next. Thanks, Chris. Oh, well, yeah, I could only do one, and and I did this digitally. Um, but oh wow! I don't know how to draw fast anymore. Well, I mean, to be fair, your yours is really polished, right? So getting this done in well, this, a the, minute, the, the quick. Uh, the character design. I did this. I did this in real life. Um, oh, cute! Um, this is fabulous. You're very noisy girls. <laughs> we sometimes lose perspective. Yeah, it's like the cumulative effect of. But this one is is tiny, and when she barks, she, the whole whole body, you know. <laughs> uh, off the floor with each mm -hmm. one and she, she's a yodeler but we love our girls mm -hmm. is it phoebe we can usually hear in the background um no that's fruit bat oh okay of oh. course it's a smaller one you can hear all the time <laughs> she's, she's especially uh, yeah awesome thanks michael we'll talk soon jackie next then audrey then mishka okay let's go a two-parter here. Oh, wait, I replaced um, it again. There's Jackie. All right. So here, what, what I have failed to teach my pet, and it's, monkey, no, get off. The, he's on the table. Monkey, get off the table. Get off the table this instant. We're starting to walk away. That's better. And then five minutes later, <laughs> the story of trying to teach anything to a cat. And then the next is... Uh, I drew him lanky because he just, uh, he's a very lanky cat. And uh, this may be because he's old now and doesn't hear himself, but he walks around and making like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but, uh, Ruth, Ruth said somebody over and said, I didn't know the cats could sound like a baby. That's great. And um, I, and I, I don't know why he does it. He's not in pain, uh, but it, you know maybe it's just his way of saying, I'm the man around here. You heard him. He's the man. That's what I learned from my cat. He's the man. That drawing looks like there's like medieval uh, illuminated manuscripts of tigers. And that drawing reminds me of like one of the drawings of a tiger that I've seen. But uh, I love me a talkative animal. I, I think as long as they're not super loud, you can you can make noise all day. I think it's hilarious, personally. Yes. So thank you. Awesome, Jackie. Thanks. Okay, going to Audrey, Mishka, then Marcy. Here's Audrey. Hi, everyone. So this is what I've not been able to teach my cat is not to bite. So uh, whenever she bites me, I just kind of go, no. And then mm -hmm. she just looks at me and then she comes and bites me again. So um, she's a she's a rescue cat. We got her when she was five years old, and we've had her for two years. And 
she lived under our bed for about 10 days before she'd come out. And so she's actually taught me the patience because Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what kind of baggage she came with, but um, uh, how she went away. So, and then it took her another two months before she'd actually come downstairs. So, Mm -hmm. but she, she comes now for cuddles and stuff, but yeah, I still get bit. Not as often though. So maybe it's getting better. Allison, I, I need to know how you uh, trained your cat not to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> so the chat is open for all sorts of lessons and obedience uh, tips and things so like that. The, the, the drawing of the biting, one, the use of color is brilliant. And two, uh, like the blood, the, the, just the one color of blood that's so brilliantly done. And two is this comic kind of reminds me of underground 70s like women artists comics like if you go and get that giant fanographics collection of women's comics I feel like you would find that comic in that collection (laughs) cool thanks thank you you. all right we'll go to Mishka there we go as I mentioned earlier I did it about the fish there was one really big fish which grew from a feeder the long story, everybody. Whoa. Um, oh, I can't read it. So um, we Holy loved Lord. going to the aquarium store in our beachside town. It glowed with possibilities. Yeah. Um, so many bright colors. I longed to take home an angel or some kind of tropical fish, but um, I was <laughs> nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So instead, we went home with lots of feeder fish who didn't know that they would soon meet their slow demise. Mm-hmm. No. All right. What's going on here? This is backwards. In the past, it wasn't very okay. Things usually started out okay. Everybody eating and growing. Mm-hmm. And then there was like just one big fish who emerged from the murky algal depth. This one. This one. And then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> was this big one eating all the others how could i stop the carnage that's such a good line <laughs> so i guess so far what i'm le- trying to teach the fish is how to survive my caretaking um i began to dread coming home to my room because i had to scoop out a dead fish nearly every day sorry i'm trying to read backwards um Who thought it was a good idea to give so much responsibility to a kid whose mom was drowning in some kind of mental health crisis? So one day I just couldn't take it. And I asked this guy, my hero, I knocked on all the doors in the apartment complex and he came over and then I hid in the pink bathroom and he went in there and I still don't know if there were any dead fish that day. The end. Jeez. That was amazing. That's an amazing comic. <laughs> Thanks. That's the first time I've written down that story. Wow. Okay. Uh, every day you would find a dead fish. Uh, yeah, we had too many fish in that aquarium. <laughs> going home. Can't even. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mishka. Bye. All right, we're going to Marcy next. Wowza. That was so dramatic. No. <laughs> oh, she cut out. He froze. You guys see what? that? I don't know. Oh. So about 10 years ago, I was hanging out at my mom's house with my sister-in-law and my mom. And I was complaining about work. And I said, oh, work, work is awful. You know, it's so hard. No one cares about what I do. You know, I don't get any respect. I was an art teacher in a title one school. And I still am now. And, and Simon, the parrot sitting on the back of my chair goes, wine, wine, wine. <laughs> That's so funny. And we just all cracked up and I realized I need to lighten up. <laughs> that is so funny. That's great. I, I also I- see a cat behind you. <clears throat> oh. She's, she was a dumpster cat rescue. <laughs> dumpster cat she doesn't want me to pet her but she she was born in a dumpster oh wow 
You can take That's the cat out of the dumpster, but you can't take the dumpster out of the cat. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. We're going to Nikki next and then Kate after that. There we go. Hi, everyone. This is... I've done a similar thing. Oh, hang on. Unmute to stop talking. So I've done what I failed to teach my cat. And I've gone, oh, get off the table. Get off the table. Ow. Get off the table. <laughs> Oh, he he cat one human zero. <laughs> and I won't go through um the things she's taught me apart from this one. My cat taught me I really didn't need that much bed space. <laughs> That's so real. That's great. <laughs> so are you Thank using you. I'm sorry, are you fun. using the huh? I, I are you using multiple colors? Because I'm seeing red. And then there's like silver, maybe, or is that just a camera? Uh, no, no. Um, the 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 red is uh, ink mm -hmm. for the red paint that she that she just walked through. <laughs> but um, I I imagine her personality like she's very loving, but she's also she's a rescue cat as well, mm -hmm. and she's a calico, so she sparks, and she's she's like. <laughs> You know, all over the place. So I've used glitter. Oh, it's mixed media. I love that. That's fabulous. Thank you very much. That was fun. All right. All right. Next up is Kate. Thanks, Nikki. You're welcome. Oops. Sorry, that was the kit. <laughs> okay. So mine is about um, my cat, Rita who got away at the vet one time out in the parking lot. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So Rita taught me that sometimes when all hope is lost, oh. maybe it isn't. And this was a guy calling who answered the ad in the paper and caught her in a live trap and was like we got oh, your wow. cat here wild as can be <laughs> in this trap <laughs> so yeah it was three months later wow. oh my god that's devastating um. <laughs> it was so great yeah that must have yeah every day feels like a treasure with her <laughs> awesome thanks kate we're going to vicky next Hi everyone. Um, stop my background. So I really appreciated the part where you said shape language and the essence of one's pet. I found Lolita on the mean streets of Fort Lauderdale. She's a five pound chihuahua. I did everything to find her rightful owners. Nobody ever stepped up and she sleeps all the time. So she taught that. me to relax. Um, she's taught me a lot of things, but I really appreciated that shape language and the essence of my pet because mm -hmm. I literally Googled after I found her, why does my dog sleep all the time? Um, because my last dog was 80 pounds and he was always all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then in the next one, what Lolita has learned, um, it says, Lolita, I have failed you so many times. Like tonight, but when I forgot to put on your harness before we went for our walk. I don't know how you learn to stay by me, but you do, even when I fail you. Mm. She's a really good, yeah, she's a really good girl. Thank you. Fabulous. I just realized, Vicki, that's Vicki from Florida. Hi, Vicki. Hi there. Again. Okay, we'll go to uh, Catherine next. And you might be muted, Catherine. Uh, am I fine now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is my, oops, my cat. <laughs> I love it. And she, um, she died very recently. Oh. And she was 
19 years old. And um, this is what, uh, oops. I was trying to teach, we were trying to teach her not to wake us up at midnight and it says, uh, uh, sh it's midnight and then she answers, I know it's midnight, but I want my cat need treat now. Well, she's a queen, she couldn't be taught. She and, the uh, Actually, my nephew who visited from France had told her to stand on that little um, milking tool when she wanted her treat. And he was successful to teach her to stand that, but we were not successful to teach her not to wake us up. And that's, uh, okay, let's see, how do we do that? Uh, that's what she taught us was she would, during COVID, she started meowing really horribly around 10 o'clock and walking towards uh, the bedroom door mm -hmm. and sit in front of the bed and meow horribly and until I picked her up or my husband picked her up and put her on the bed. So that's our story. <laughs> That's I love great. the character design. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, Marlene. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Anna and Tom. Thank you for inviting me. Um, this is my imaginary friend, Panda. Oh, and uh, she is very bossy, so I call her boss girl. Uh, she she's inside of an elevator and doesn't know how to get out, so she says, "I'm stuck." Hey, I'm reading the blurb about how to get my way out of here. Help! And so she takes out her mobile phone and works out how to, uh, you know, get a, the lift going, the elevator going, mm -hmm. so she can get out. She's pretty uh, smart. And um, I thank you for giving me the opportunity just to make one frame, that's all I did. Um, thank you so much, have a good week. Yeah, tax savvy panda, love it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks Marlene, see you later. All right, we'll go to Allison Thomas next. Let's see. There we go. Hi. One moment. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, okay. I don't have a pet of my own. Um, but so I wrote about other people's pets. Um, let's see. So first, I wrote about this mystery outdoor cat that keeps coming into my uh, backyard. I don't know anything about it aside from its name boogie boogie that's all that's mm -hmm. on its collar and it seems pretty small and always hungry but I think cats and most pets always are but just to be on the safe side recently I've been feeding it plain shredded chicken because the internet said this was okay to do um and now I think the only thing I've taught it is that there's a 24-hour diner in my back <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it now just comes up the door just like this <laughs> um and then for the second one um I wrote about my um sister and her partner Tina's uh two Boston Terriers and what I've learned from them uh and I've learned two things one uh Boston Terriers snore just like people so Frank small yet so loud um and the second thing that I've learned is that if they see human food they look at you like they haven't um, seen any food in a thousand years, um, <laughs> like Daisy with um, a bowl of ramen that I had one time at their place, or this most recent photo of Penny that my sister took, um, where she was holding up a plate of food, and all you could really see of Penny were just her eyes, which are just massive and dilated. So, <laughs> so true. That's what I've learned. <laughs> well done. Great. Awesome, Allison. Thanks. All right, we're going to go to Libby. There we go. Hi, everybody. 
So this is my little um, sketches of a snowshoe hare that is not really a pet, but well, you'll see. But I realized it's basically a stomach with a head. So that's what was going on. It's great. Um, this is, I'm not going to be able to read this because it's backwards for me, but basically we um, rescued a hare that had a snare wrapped around its body by throwing apples at it and catching it. And um, we could tell which hare it was because there was a patch of shaved fur from where the wildlife people were able to remove the mm -hmm. um, snare. Anyway, we kept enticing it with apples, eventually um, fed it some alfalfa pellets and uh, it eventually came really close. So, but <clears throat> anyway, I'm not exactly sure. I guess that was teaching it to, teaching it to come to the diner that Allison just mentioned. Um, so I look for the hair every day, even though I know it's not the same hair because we're like six years on and they have a short lifespan. Mm -hmm. I feel, uh, I don't even know what this is. I feel so something when I see it, does it say? Happy, I don't know. Sometimes I don't see it for weeks at a time and then it's back and then it's gone. And my niece died and um, being outside is the place where I feel like I can stand it at all. And then seeing the hair on top of a mossy rock um, all day long in sight of the house is basically the thing that makes me happy. And that's it. Um, well, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm obviously sorry for your loss. This, in terms of the hair, the character design of this is brilliant. Like it's super simple, but very effectively shows a hair and it's just kind of got an elegance to the drawings. Um, yeah, Thanks. it's really well done. Really beautiful, Libby. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. And we had another Allison. Did they skip town? Hang on. No, I think I hit the wrong. I think I hit my hand back up, Tom. Sorry. Oh, let me let me see if I can. No try. worries. No worries. Um, wait, no, I don't see your hand back up. So your hand is down. I just gotta look around and find you. Are you okay? Uh, wait. So okay, I'm not. No. I, I already went, I, I thought I had put my hand down. Oh, but your yeah, head, I oh, it. Yeah, sorry. oh, okay, I thought, okay, I thought we yeah, had, yeah, yeah. there was like yeah. three Allison's, okay. All right, well, our last one, then will be Paula. I see Paula just raised and then, and then we'll go. Um, but we need Paula to like, um, go to video before we can, yeah, there we go, before we can replace okay. the spotlight. Let's see, here we go. Cool. So this was the uh, first, where's the cat? There she is. So the first one was uh, the cat, which was, she, she wasn't a pet of ours, but she was like an alley cat, but she was in our neighborhood. And we always tried to, to feed her, but she would just always ignore us. Be like, I don't want your food. And so I'd always try to entice her, but look, we got some fresh food. And she like totally didn't care. Um, but she would always like, catch her own food she'd find birds and mice and whatever and she just like never ate our food and then one day I did try the cat food myself and it was kind of gross so I could see why <laughs> she didn't <laughs> want to eat it so yeah um, and I was gonna start another one about my friend's dog who's pretty awesome we went hiking with her and we did, went down this um, waterfall and she was like super scared for like 20 minutes she was running back and forth barking and barking I'm sure to her, it looked like we're at the end of the world because she can't see our feet. She's like, well, I don't know how far down that goes. But eventually, like, she slid down. And uh, I didn't do the last panel, but she was so excited and, like, got so confident from that hike. Like, it, I felt like she became a, you know, a woman that day. She was, like, a teenager, <laughs> and she felt like she matured, and she was, like, super confident. But It does yeah. look like a very proud, happy dog in the third panel. Yeah. Sliding she's, down. she's so awesome. I don't even see her as my friend's pet. She's like one of our friends, you know, she's like one Aww. of us. <laughs> she's really cool. But yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Paulo. All right. Um, going to replace with Anna. Anna, thank you so much. You really got some cool cat stories, dog stories, mm -hmm. rabbit stories, fish stories. Story. Yep. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. And thanks. a parrot. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so thanks so much for doing this. I think, I think, I don't know. I just got, the, especially like the designing, everybody really went to town with like, what is their, what is their, their animal really like look like and feel like? And we saw so many really interesting designs. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm all it. about a good character design because I hate drawing myself and I do autobio comics. Ah. So that's why I draw myself abstractly because drawing myself realistically is like literally the most boring thing in the world to draw. So when you can make a cool character design, I'm all about it. Awesome. So thanks everybody uh, in the chat. One more time, I'll put where you can, um, let's see if I can get it, where you can share, hang on, and and how you can tag um, Saw and Anna. And meanwhile, we'll just, unmute ourselves and just say good night and thank you to Anna. Anna and Anna's going to be teaching a workshop mm -hmm. at SPX somewhere in September. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anna. It was great. Oh, yeah. And if you have thank a pen, you, you want to have put it good. in front of the camera. Hurry up. <laughs> Nobody mentioned oh, that yeah. before. But... Oh, we got a bird. He's not stepping up. Uh, <laughs> only, only Rudy is present. Apricot is hiding because uh, it's raining. But that's Rudy. Oh, Mercy, Marcy's cat there. Jamie's still on. So bye, Jamie. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. I, I enjoyed what I saw. I'll try. To, I'll try to post something later if I get it done. If I get packing. And thanks for all the nice things you said. You guys rock. Bye. bye. Good luck, Jamie. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Dog is so much bigger than I thought. Wow, look at that dog. All right, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you next week with Whit Taylor, hopefully. And thanks so much, Anna. We'll keep in touch. We'll talk. Um, Mark, that's uh, Michael, Hold on. That's... Apricot, come here. Are you kidding? You might as well say goodbye. That's the first Happy, one. That's the not the, the one that's up. not fruit bed. Oh. Hello, darling. Maybe. Look at you. Oh. <laughs> oh. My God. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>